Samoa Kirti Nardasa Sutra addresses the role of the pure and impure in Buddhist tradition. Samoa Kirti uses different skillful means to reveal the truth of emptiness and non-duality to conscious beings. His key themes include gender and identity, in Manjushri, the Bodhisattva of Wisdom, plays a major role in the stories of Vimalakirti. Manjushri's interactions with Vimalakirti call into question the idea of sickness, duality, treatment of other living beings, and gender equality. In one of the earlier chapters, the Buddha sent Manjushri to inquire about Vimalakirti's sickness. When Manjushri does so, Vimalakirti explains to him that the sickness is empty. He says the sickness is immaterial and invisible. It is not a physical illness because the body is insubstantial in itself. And yet, it is not a mental illness either because the mind is like an illusion. None of the four elements, earth, wind, fire, and water, are disturbed in him. Vimalakirti states to Manjushri. Vimalakirti is only sick because elements of other living beings are disturbed by sickness. Then, Manjushri asks Vimalakirti how one bodhisattva should console another bodhisattva who is sick. Vimala Kirti instructs him to remind the sick bodhisattva that the body is impermanent. However, he warns against encouraging a sick bodhisattva to exhibit renunciation or disgust for the body. One bodhisattva should tell a sick bodhisattva to confess evil deeds, but not for the sake of absolution. Manjushri then raises the question of how a bodhisattva should console his own mind if he is a sick bodhisattva. Similar Kirti tells him that sickness comes from the involvement in the process of inner misunderstanding, as well as from passions of unreal mental constructions. Since the four elements have no owner and no agent, a sick bodhisattva should abandon the concept of himself as a personality. Instead, he must think of himself as a thing. He should con- cultivate the consideration that conception of a thing is also a misunderstanding, and is also a great sickness. Therefore, the sick bodhisattva should strive to eliminate the sickness. Vimala Kirti then explains to Manjushri how to eliminate such sickness. He tells him that eliminating sickness is eliminating egoism and possessiveness. The elimination of egoism and possessiveness leads to freedom from dualism. Freedom from dualism comes from the absence of involvement with the internal and external. This absence is characterized by no deviation, non-fluctuation, and lack of distraction from equanimity. Equanimity is the equality of everything from self to liberation. This means that both self and liberation are void, and neither is established in reality. One who sees equanimity sees no difference between voidness and sickness. So, for one who sees equanimity, sickness is equal to voidness. Therefore, Sickness as voidness is in itself void. This all means that, according to Vimala Kirti, bodhisattvas must recognize the suffering of all living beings through their own suffering and should resolve to cure all illnesses through teaching the Dharma. In response to these explanations, Manjushri questions Vimala Kirti further by asking him about the meaning of the great compassion. Vimala Kirti answers that great compassion in order not to exhaust the Bodhisattva and all of his reincarnations, must be free of involvement with any, any sentimentally propulsive ideas. When a Bodhisattva is reincarnated, it is like he is being liberated, so that he can teach the Dharma and liberate living beings from bondage. Only a liberated Bodhisattva is able to liberate others. Liberative technique, when experiencing a taste of contemplation and meditation, is what brings liberation. Wisdom must be integrated with liberative technique in order to liberate. Similar Kirti then con- continues to explain how great compassion motivates wisdom and liberati- liberative techniques to become integrated. This is demonstrated by concentration on voidness, singleness, wishlessness, as well as the cu- cultivation of auspicious signs, on adornment of Buddha field senses, and on work of the development of living beings. This behavior leads to liberation. Sentimental compassion, on the other hand, leads to the lack of integration of wisdom and liberative technique, and therefore leads to bondage. Sentimental compassion is characterized by failure to concentrate on the cultivation of auspicious signs, on the adornment of Buddhist field senses, and on the work of the development of living beings, despite one's concentration on voidness, singleness, and wishlessness. The bondage that results from sentimental compassion 
involves planting, planting roots of virtue, but not for the sake of enlightenment, while living in the grip of passions and attachments. The liberation resulting from the integration of liberative technique and wisdom involves planting roots of virtue for the sake of enlightenment, without pride, and foregoing passions and attachments. After this, an three questions Vimala Kirti on the topic of a Bodhisattva's domain. Vimala Kirti describes the Bodhisattva's domain as the domain of the world, rather than the domain of passion. Their domain is where one understands liberation, but does not enter final liberation. It is where one seeks com- comprehension of omniscience and knowledge of the four holy truths, but does, not, but does so at the wrong time. It is where one sees relativity without entertaining convictions. A bodhisattva's domain is one of solitude that will not exhaust body and mind. And it is also a domain of wishlessness, where one voluntarily manifests itself in the world. These are the characteristics of a bodhisattva's domain, as Vimala Kirti described them to Manjusri on the day of Manjusri's inquiries about Vimala Kirti's sickness. In another famous scene of the Vimala Kirti, Vimala Kirti Nardasa Sutra. Hundreds of, hundreds of bodhisattvas are debating and discussing the concept of non-duality. All of the bodhisattvas give their own varying perceptions of the meaning of non-duality, but nobody can agree on how one explanation of how to enter non-duality. At the end of the discussion between the other bodhisattvas, Manjushri steps forward and speaks up. He responds to their conversation with his own explanation of the door of duality. He instructs them on the only way to enter non-duality. He says that one must know no single teaching, express nothing, say nothing, announce nothing, and indicate nothing, especially designate nothing. In response to this, Jamala Kirti says nothing, obviously acknowledging Manjushri's statement as correct. With this, 5,000 bodhisattvas understood, and so entered the the dharma of non-duality. In another section of the Vimala Kirti Nardasa Sutra, Manjushri discusses how to treat living beings with Vimala Kirti. Vimala Kirti tells Manjushri that a bodhisattva should treat them in a way that acknowledges the ultimate selflessness of living beings. So then, Manjushri asks him how a bodhisattva should demonstrate the great love towards living beings. Vimala Kirti responds that one should generate great love by teaching the Dharma. He says that there are several important characteristics of this love. First, great love should be peaceful and free from passion. Secondly, it should be firm, unbreakable, spontaneous, and without presumption. It should also be a love that is never exhausted, because it acknowledges voidness and selflessness. Finally, great love should introduce the happiness of Buddha to living beings. After this description of great love, Manjushri asks a series of questions, and Vimala Kirti responds with a number of teachings. He tells Manjushri that the great joy of bodhisattvas is to be joyful and without regret in living. He declares that when one is afraid of life, one should resort to the magnanimity of the Buddha by standing in equanimity towards all living beings. Vimala Kirti then states that one should not produce evil nor destroy good in order to eliminate passion. Lastly, he reminds Manjushri that materiality is the root of good and evil. More specifically, false concept leads to unreal construction, which causes desire, and desire is the root of materiality. Therefore, something that has no root is baseless, and baselessness is the root of false concept. This discussion between Manjushri and Vimala Kirti sparks the famous scene of the goddess and Saraputra. The scene between the goddess and Saraputra begins with a debate about flowers. The goddess says that flowers lack constructual thoughts of discrimination and are therefore appropriate to fall on the shoulders of bodhisattvas. With this, she establishes her wisdom and continually demonstrates it as the conversation with Saraputra goes on. She speaks about how those who proclaim, I have realized, are too proud and so they have not actually come to any true realization. From their conversation, Saraputra realizes the wisdom of the goddess and asks her why she does not change from her female form. The goddess responds by transforming herself into Saraputra's body and him into the body of the goddess, and presents him with the same question. By doing this, the goddess demonstrates the teaching that, in all things, there is neither male nor female. 
In other words, Zarathustra neither made nor changed his female form because things are neither made nor changed. With this, the goddess shows Zarathustra the irrelevance of gender concerning enlightenment. All of the teachings previously discussed come about through the questions and discussions of Manjusri, the Bodhisattva of Wisdom. In addition, one of his conversations with Vimala Turkey directly produces the famous scene between Saraputra and the goddess. Therefore, his role in the Vimala Kirti Nardesa Sutra is key in unraveling Vimala Kirti's ideas about the dharma of non-duality, emptiness, and a number of other important topics, including great compassion and great love.